Uh, uncertain time over the past couple of weeks, few weeks. Can you talk to us from your perspective what it has been like with the uncertainty and uh, with this event sort of falling apart? I think life in general is uncertain for everybody, right? Um, obviously for me, the last year and a half since I got the phone call in January of 2022 about the Ultimate Fighter, there was a little bit of certainty there um, doing the Ultimate Fighter. And then originally it was, hey, we're going to fight in September after the show. Obviously, we know how that played out. We got booked for the following June. And then, um, you know, the last couple of weeks, I honestly was just living in it. You know, obviously, press conference gets, gets canceled. Luckily, you know, I didn't fly over there. For anybody who wrote an article or put out misinformation that I flew over there for no reason, I was not over there. Um, and then um, it was just rumors, the rumor mill, with, a, with an organization, a worldwide organization as big as the UFC. People are going to talk, people are going to speculate. And all the way up to the last you know, moment until I got the phone call, Connor's never pulled out of a fight. So um, whether it was an injury, whether it was whatever the circumstances may be, I stayed positive, I stayed training, and then got the phone call, and here I am. When you do get that phone call, do you sort of, is it hard not to think, oh my God, it's, it's all over? Or do you think, okay, they're going to reschedule this, and we are going to get it done, and, and that's what the UFC does? Um, yeah, I mean, throughout the entire process, you know, obviously, um, I wasn't even really informed of what it was besides possibly an injury, right? Obviously, they're not going to, they, they're not allowed to tell me what the injury is, how severe it is. Um, they have a duty to keep that, do, that, that stuff private. Um, I didn't find out what, what the actual injury was until Connor posted it, and that's the way it should be. I don't, I don't want to know what is ailing on my opponents, and I don't want anybody to know what's ailing on me. Um, but yeah, it's a, tough, it's a tough phone call to get, obviously. Just put in 10 weeks of solid work away from my family. Um, just having the best camp of my life. Um, but hey, that's, uh, this, is how it, this is how it goes, and this is what I signed up for. I signed up for an uncertain uh, career path. I've had numerous opponents pull out. I've still to this day in 22, hands, 22 years of hand-to-hand -hand combat, 16 years of fighting, I've never missed weight, I've never pulled out of a fight, and I should have pulled out of a couple fights in, in my past and taken losses because of it. Um, so I'll hang my hat on that and uh, control the uncontrollables and enjoy UFC 303 from the stands. Did you meet with the UFC last night? I did. It was with, with the UFC, so we're, uh, we're working on some things. Related to Connor or potentially unrelated to Connor? It's always related to Connor. You know, um, people can talk about why, what my motivation is for waiting, what my motivation is for um, sitting out for as long as I have. Um, quite frankly, I needed a little bit of time off. I came in to the UFC hot and uh, had some fights of the year candidates, fight of the year 2021. Um, so it's always revolving around Connor. I've enjoyed this time um, doing things outside of the octagon and then just had a phenomenal camp. Um, but my motivation has been I signed my name on a dotted line back in January to do the Ultimate Fighter and then fight Conor McGregor. Um, and I try to be a man of my word in every aspect of my life. So that's what, uh, that's what my number one goal is here. Obviously, I want to fight Conor. And uh, sources close to Conor, like yourself, I'm sure know that he's going to be ready in September, August. Um, so we can make some things happen. So it was a positive meeting. It's always positive with the UFC. Even when it's negative, it's positive. Um, this is, I'm living an absolute dream. When I first started fighting in 2009, all I wanted to do was be here. And it's so much different here than any other organization in the entire world. Um, and the UFC takes, takes flack because they are at the absolute top and there's people trying to pull them down in every single aspect of it. But these guys know how to run a business. These guys are absolute consummate professionals with huge hearts and they're just as gutted about this fight falling through as I am, as you guys are. And uh, that's how, that's been the sentiment of those conversations. And we'll, uh, we'll improvise, adapt and overcome and we'll figure out what's next Mike, very soon. Well, here. Uh, what was your reaction when the injury was revealed to be, you know, broken toes? Because I think some fans and pundits thought it'd be a more, like maybe a little more serious injury than that. A little bit more what? Serious. S serious? I mean, hey, have you ever had a broken pinky toe? Yes. You have? Yeah. I don't know if I have had a broken pinky toe. Now, yes, it's probably the most insignificant of toes. I would give them that. I would give the, the pundits that. Um, I mean, I, I think there's actually a significant pop, uh, portion of the populace that their pinky toes didn't even touch the ground. It's, I think it's called hanging toe syndrome. Um, 
But I think if anything, you know, two things when it, when it comes, or a couple of thoughts on this whole thing. Obviously the, the reason I've been able to, to sit out for as long as I have is because I'm not just a fighter. I'm a fighter who is a businessman and an entrepreneur and a father and I have all these things going on. And even when I'm not fighting, I have not called the UFC one time for a paycheck while I'm doing all of this stuff. I have money coming in, I'm able to support my family. Um, and then secondly, it also is just somewhat of a feather in my cap. If Connor was lined up against a lot of other guys, he probably would have pushed through and fought. But you don't want to fight a guy like me um, with any kind of injuries. And he's going to come into the next fight, whenever it is, with bumps and bruises. Um, obviously, he uh, was hobbling around on it and probably said, hey, man, there's no way I, I, could, I could fight, but I'm not fighting that guy. And uh, we'll just figure it out as we go. And obviously, when he, when he put out that long statement, I think the last line was Chandler or not. Uh, I guess what went through your mind there, because like you seemed locked in for him, and all of a sudden there's that Chandler or not, I think was the big sentence that kind of fans kind of circled out. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really even think about it much. Um, he tried to steal my tagline, though. I see what he did there with the see you at the top. Um, but, man, uh, I'm not really that worried about it. I mean, Connor can't, at this point, and I've said this publicly, I'm not letting him off the hook. Um, for a while there, yeah, of course, he, I'm, he would love to come back and fight somebody other than Michael Chandler with, with what I bring to the octagon. Um, I think uh, there's no way he comes back to the UFC and doesn't fight me. So if I do pivot, if there are other names being thrown out, if there are huge fights that I can, that I can go ahead and, and pivot and take, whenever he is ready to come back, his road back to the UFC goes straight through Nashville, Tennessee, and Michael Chandler, and that's it. Have, has the UFC floated other names to you, or has it just been Connor and, and that's it? I mean, we've always been focused on Connor. There, obviously, the, the UFC has a duty to uh, look at other options. Um, there's some great options out there, um, a lot of options that you guys have all heard. And uh, I love fighting. I love fighting big names, big fights, big venues, big opportunities. And uh, I've got a lot of options, but we're still focused on Connor. Were any of those options seriously considered when they were presented after Connor pulled out? Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, life is all about, life change, life is all about um, adapting with circumstances and time, right? And in that time when I got that phone call, I'm in phenomenal shape. I just put in 10 weeks. I was away from my family. Um, I'm not gonna say it was time wasted because it was not time wasted whatsoever. Um, I took a shot, I signed my name on a dotted line and I was doing my job and the rug gets pulled out from underneath you so you keep, you keep moving forward. But um, yeah, I mean, they were in that moment, I'm, I'm ready to fight. I was sitting on my couch down in, in Florida and talking to management, talking to the UFC, you know, part of me just wants to fight. Um, but it, they were considered, but here we are. And last one for me, has a date been presented to you? A date has not been presented to me, um, but we've got some dates. Mike over here, uh, just quickly. Um, you, you mentioned, you know, big fights. Does any part of you want to avenge any of the losses that you've had in the UFC, like say like a Charles Oliveira, or is it just, you know, big names and, you know, obviously Connor at the top of the list, but, uh, you know, probably big names outside that. But I know some fans are wondering, like, if you would want to avenge some of those losses. It's a, it's a good question. I mean, honestly, my motivation for a fight or a rematch with somebody would not be to avenge a loss. I look at this sport like on any given night, anybody, any of us inside the top five, top 10 could beat each other. Any, any one of us could be a, the world champion on an, any given night in our weight classes. Um, I like that matchup with Charles. Um, you know, obviously you, you would allude to Gaethje and Poirier and these guys who I've who lost to. And I have a ton of respect for those guys. Loved competing against them the first time and, and would welcome a rematch uh, down the line because I think everybody would be intri intrigued by the, the rivalries that we have had now. I just saw Charles, you know, yesterday, and we, you know, shook hands, gave a hug, and you know, God bless you type of situation. So, ton of respect for these guys, and we'll see. And just last one for me, how do you deal with the negativity online? I know you're a pretty good guy with that, but it seems like people are pretty much like, you know, obsessed with saying you drop the ball, and there, there's a lot of like sort of different things online that people have said to you. How do you deal with all that? Um. There's moments where I'm like, yeah, okay, maybe maybe these guys are right, but most of the time they aren't. You know, there's just not enough actual information out there, and it's all all a matter of opinion, especially in 2024 with social media. I mean, if anything, if you read between the lines of the negative comments, it's not that people 
Um, obviously, the haters are going to hate, right? But so many people just want to see me fight. You know, I take it as a compliment when people talk about the layoff, people talk about me not being inside of the octagon because go sit in any one of these arenas on any Saturday night, any given Saturday night, whether it's a fight night or it's a pay-per-view, when I step inside the octagon, it's, there's just a different feel, there's a different speed, there's a different amount of violence that happens. So I take it as a, uh, a compliment because I am a desired individual to watch in this sport and I put butts in seats. Um, so that's the way that I have taken it and I'm running my own race with blinders on and I'm not worried about what anybody else is thinking. Michael in the middle, <clears throat> you said that, uh, you know, it's been floated that Connor would be ready either August or September. If it's September, then that puts it at the event at the Sphere. It's about 10 weeks from, that, from now. You've talked about having other things going on. You're a father and you're a businessman. How disruptive is it for you to spend another 10 weeks in a camp, which basically is a possibility that you may have a fight lined up? Um, I think it's never a disruptor. I mean, I, I, just because I have things going on outside of the octagon doesn't mean that fighting uh, in the UFC is my number one job and my sole, um, my sole purpose on this earth uh, while I'm young enough to do it and healthy enough to do it. Um, Sphere would be great. Like you said, it's 10 weeks away. Um, I'm not a doctor, but I know a pinky toe doesn't take a, too long to heal. Um, that would be massive. You know, it's, uh, it sounds to me like it's going to be a, a one and done uh, type of event. Dana has touted it as um, the biggest event in UFC history, and it may never be done before. And if you want to do the numbers that they want to do, um, it seems as though this fight between myself and Connor would fit the bill. Um, I am not uh, the one to make those decisions, but the UFC knows I always have my work boots on, and I'm ready to go tomorrow if they want to go. I'm not fighting you, but I did break my pinky toe twice last year. Oh my gosh. So how long does it take to recover? I got on six inch heels. Oh, see, we're good. We're Just good. Saying. Connor's wearing slippers at Bellator fights. So he's the Bellator tick. Like over here. I know you've accomplished a lot of different things across different platforms and organizations, but would a potential win against Conor McGregor be the most feel good moment in your career, given how long this buildup has been? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, at the very onset of this process, that size of a of a fight um, with that amount of eyeballs, that's uh, that's what we're striving to as mixed martial artists. We we get into the sport uh, to be the best and to be on the biggest stages, under the brightest lights, on the biggest platforms, and that uh, that checks all boxes. But now, especially with the storyline, with the intrigue, uh, waiting in the wings, the build up, the marination of this entire thing, yeah, I think it would be. Uh, it's going to be very satisfying when I make true on my word to show up whenever the next date is and uh, knock him out. He was going to be the second round, and now he lit a fire on him. It's probably going to be the first round. You uh, brought up Dustin Poirier there a couple minutes ago. We may or may not know if he's going to come back after that Islam fight. So if that indeed was his last fight, what do you make of his career, and how was it like sharing the octagon? Yeah, I mean, Dustin is... Uh, you know, I, I love seeing the love that he has gotten over these last couple weeks because you don't really know what you got until it's gone, right? So um, in this sport that's very fickle and uh, the, uh, the fans are with you one week and aren't with you the next week, that man has uh, been doing this since he was a teenager and fought all these times in the UFC, he fought for world titles, and uh, he's revered by, revered by many. So hats off to him if this is his, his uh, you know, retirement and, and moving on to, to the second chapter of his life. Um, and it was an honor to share the octagon with him. Uh, Dustin and I um, aren't the best of friends. I think there's a little bit of a little bit of bad taste, taste in his mouth for me and maybe a little bit for, for uh, my, me for him. Um, but I wish him nothing but the best. Michael, uh, over here, how, how tough is it for you to be here tonight? And how, how tough do you think it'll be as the main event approaches to be sitting in the, in the crowd instead of in the cage? I think as an athlete, you get really good at compartmentalizing things. Um, I can honestly say it, it really hasn't been very hard. I mean, every now and then, I mean, more than anything, it's International Fight Week, and I have taken pictures with, shaken the hands, and uh, uh, met over a thousand fans this weekend, and every single one of them talking about the flights that they took, where they came from, the tickets that they bought, they all came here to watch me fight Connor. Um, so obviously I'm constantly reminded of it. Um, but as an athlete, you get really good at compartmentalizing it. And I don't think it has affected me as, as much as most people would think it has. Um, 
It's just the way the world goes, man. This is the way life is. You get, you get knocked down, you get let down, and uh, the true measure of a man is how he stands under circumstances like this. And I guess when we do hear the next day, um, every fan is going to be like, yeah, right. It's not going to happen. He's going to pull out at some point. It's not going to come about. How do you go through camp knowing, like, any day I can get the call that it's not going to happen? Like, I, I just have to train like it actually is going to happen. How do you kind of keep that mentality? It's what, I, it's what I've done since I was 14 years old. There is no certainties. I mean, I have thrown myself into the fire every single day since I was 14 years old in hand-to-hand -hand combat, watching teammate after teammate fall to injury, fall to sickness, get transferred, get kicked out of school, uh, get in car accidents, have family members pass away, like all of these different things. This, we brave the unknown every single day and it gets lost on so many people who criticize us for what we do and, what, and how much we throw ourselves into the fire every single day. Every single practice could be my last, not just in mixed martial arts, um, but with two capable arms and two capable legs, this is what we do. And that's why everybody shows up to these arenas every single weekend and watches us on pay-per-view or they show up in person. Um, so I just put one foot in front of the other and I do exactly what I've done since I was 14 years old. And, and truthfully, people can criticize what I have done and how I have handled this and the decisions that I have made or not made. Um, but the way that I have gone about this is a blueprint for how people can or should be handling the circumstances that they have to go through in life. And if I have to be that guy who's, who falls on that sword and I have to be that guy who climbs that hill, that's the hill I'm gonna keep on climbing until this fight gets booked. And it's been, you mentioned it's been a year and a half of your life. It could potentially be two years, you know, if you're waiting for another date. If it never happens, are you okay with that, with your career? Absolutely. Is it gonna, you know, is it gonna be a little bit of a letdown? Yeah, but I'm not in control of this. You're not in control of this. Not just my UFC career, but my entire life. We're not in control. So um, would I look at it and say, okay, maybe that was wasted time, but maybe it wasn't, you know? Um, I've done a lot of growing over the last year and a half. It's been a really enjoyable, a lot of fun. Um, but, um, yeah, no, I mean, I don't think it's going to be a letdown. And maybe that's me protecting myself from the letdown and just not really thinking about it. Just like you said, going, you know, asking about the question about going through training camp, waiting for that phone call. I'm not going to wait for the phone call, and I'm not going to wait for this fight to fall through. I'm just going to keep on moving forward. Uh, Michael, question over here uh, to your left. Uh, do you see yourself fighting for the BMF title uh, before your career is over and done with? I think... Uh, it's all, it's all time and circumstance, you know? Obviously, I think it's, it's public knowledge at this point that Max's name was floated out there in these last couple weeks. I have a ton of respect for Max Holloway. Um, not just because he is a bad mofo, but he dubbed it the, the blessed man forever, you know? And Max is the epitome of a guy who says, hey, I am the guy who will stand in the middle of an octagon, point to the center, and throw, throw hands until one of us goes unconscious. But also, I'm a good dude. Um, so I got a ton of respect for him. I would love to compete against him. Um, it's, I guess it's up to the, the court of public opinion whether or not I am a, a BMF uh, caliber guy. I have my opinions. I think I am, and I would love to share the octagon with Max at some point in my, my career. And while, you know, the fight with Connor obviously didn't happen at 303, do you feel like it's a blessing in disguise? Because obviously things happen for a reason. And, you know, uh, uh, can you talk to me a little bit about your faith? Uh, through this, uh, like, two years? Yeah, I mean, my, my life has been a, a constant up and down of if a bad thing happens to you but a good thing comes from it, was it really a bad thing? And I think that's, that is uh, one of the storylines of this, uh, this whole booking and falling apart and, and fake date back in December and fake date back in October and all the different... This, this fight's been talked about and rumored for just about every month of the 12-month 12, 12 month calendar uh, at some point over the last year and a half. Um, but I've just enjoyed... I've enjoyed being the guy who gets the darts thrown at him and just keeps on moving forward. Uh, because the way that I react and the way that I respond says so much more about me than it does the words on social media uh, or the words that are written in the media. And uh, like I said, I'm running my own race. And uh, watch it all work out and watch it all work out in a spectacular fashion. And I'm not going to say I told you so. I'm just going to keep on moving forward and you guys can say I told you so for me. And uh, did you see Eddie Alvarez, uh, his tweet, he was like, I want to save the day after Connor pulled out. Did you see that? 
Um, I think I did. I think I did. I mean, obviously, Eddie, Eddie and I have a, a little bit of history, um, and I got a ton of respect for Eddie. He's one of the one of the good ones in the sport, and. Uh, one of the most entertaining guys that we have seen grace the the octagon or any cage around the world. Um, you never know what's going to happen. Um, that's uh, it was interesting. Um, obviously, Eddie is not signed with the UFC, but um, as I said, keep uh, keep the options open. But we know what the number one option is. Michael, just over here. Um, you mentioned obviously names like Max Holloway and the dates of September and October, but have you given yourself like a timeline that if it doesn't get to a certain point, if it gets to a certain point that you'll start to accept maybe a fight with someone like Max Holloway? I think we'll know a lot in the next week or so. I think we'll know a lot in the next week or two um, how some things are going to play out. Um, once again, time and circumstance. Everything changes just with time and circumstance. Um, I think I've gotten that question over the last year excuse me, over the last year, you know, timeline, hey, is there a certain date? When do you pull the plug? When do you, you know, insert catchphrase here? Um, and uh, I haven't really thought about it, but I know that uh, some information is going to be coming my way very soon and, and we'll figure it out. And do you have any regrets about kind of waiting so long and not taking a fight first and then probably, you know, waiting? Is, is there any regrets? No, no regrets because I still say um, I, had an, I had enough reassurances behind the scenes, th uh, conversations that you guys will never hear about, um, assurances that you guys have never heard or, or will have, have heard about. Um, there's so much going on behind the scenes that is not public knowledge. Um, and once again, I've never been offered another opponent throughout the entire process. Um, had I, then I would have had decisions to make. But this is the fight to make. It's Chandler versus McGregor. And uh, so I don't have any regrets. And, but it makes a lot of sense why people would ask that question or why people would be surprised that I would have no regrets. Hey, Mike. Uh, is ring rust a concern for when you do get back in the octagon, regardless of whether it's against Connor or anyone else? No, I, I truly believe that I've been aging backwards for uh, about the last five years. Um, I'm 38 years old. Um, I think that surprises a lot of people. Um, as, I, as I just said, it's not just, uh, it's not just uh, words when I say this was the best camp that I have had. Um, felt great. I honestly think the funny thing is time off helped me helped me recover my body, but it also, I think it broke some bad habits that I had. The bad habits that a lot of you guys could probably point to in the, the UFC runs thus far for me, those habits were not there because I took, took a little bit of time off, pulled myself out of the sport uh, for the better part of a year, and then got back into camp, and all of a sudden I felt like a new fighter. So ring rust does not, uh, does not, not a concern of mine. I mean, I think Fighting Connor is different than fighting anybody else when it comes to the size of the event, the aura of the event. So um, whether I had been off, you know, two months or 12 months or 22 months, it's going to be a different fight no matter what because of, the, because of what he brings to the octagon or the eyeballs and the feeling in, inside the octagon. One quick random. I had never heard of hanging toe syndrome. Is that a is random it true? fact in your Are you head? Googling it? Are you Googling no, it right I now? No, I wondered, did you Google I did Google it. I, was, I looked at my wife. I said, hey, sweetie, isn't there, isn't there a thing where people's pinky toe doesn't touch the ground? She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. She's a doctor. She's like, I don't really know what you're talking about. There's probably, maybe, so maybe it's not an actual real medical term, but I, look, I Googled it, and I think it's called hanging toe syndrome. Well, <laughs> he's got it. Also known as floppy toe. Floppy toe. All right. So, you know, so I think... Uh, I think it's my brother or somebody. I've definitely been around some people before where their toe does, their pinky toe doesn't touch the ground, and it, it's not a deformity or anything. It's completely normal. It's fine, but it was just kind of a joke that I made. And uh, as I said, I think you saw my tweet right after. I mean, no hard feelings. My heart is full. I'll see you. I'll see you soon. You know, that's that's how it is. You know, that man's putting his life on the line, training every single day, just like I am. And whether he should have, should not have, or whether I would have still fought without it or not, it's neither here nor there.